So far we had introduced Markdown only on a tiny level. Which means, by now you should know how to emphasize words and phrases within a paragraph. How to add images and how you can use references to point to internal or external resources. But, all we did so far is to work with paragraphs. But as pointed out in the quote below, Markdown can do even more. Within the following part we will learn how to deal with Markdown blocks and how to format your content to define the following elements. List, block quotes, tables, custom HTML, horizontal rules and dealing with code blocks. The GitHub flavored Markdown supports two types of lists. Ordered and unordered ones, and so does Lia script. If you ever used a typewriter then the following syntax for lists would look natural to you. The only thing that matters here is the correct indentation. To define an unordered list, starting asterisks, asterisk, pluses, plus, and dashes, dash, can be used and mixed. If one point has more than one line, you can also use multiple lines to define paragraphs. All other markdown elements, you will get to know, can be included in the same way. As you can see from the result, you can apply all markdown styling elements freely. The starting characters will be interpreted equally. Thus it makes no difference, if you use asterisks, pluses and dashes. To improve the readability of your document, we would recommend to stick with one format for every level. Starting with asterisks on the first level and dashes within the second level, etc. Ordered lists start with a number and a dot. As you can see from the example, the numbering is important. In contrast to the GitHub flavored markdown or the original markdown, where the list below would result in two separate lists, and the numbering for every list would start at one, ignoring your numbering order. With the Lear script interpretation you can separate your lists, add more explanations in between, or use animations to make certain parts appear or disappear. If you from time to time, reply to emails, then the following notation will look quite familiar to you. To make use of quoted text, simply start a line with a greater than greater than character. As you can see from the example, all markdown elements can be used within a block quote and vice versa. Everything you have learned so far can be easily combined. It could also be a gallery or an embedded object. Block quotes are often used for citations, and so do we. You can use the following pattern to mark a block quote as a citation. Simply use two paragraphs within a block quote and start the second one with two dashes. Dash dash dot dot. The resulting block quote looks slightly different. Furthermore, the paragraph followed by dashes is put into an HTML. Cite tag. You can use this syntax with starting dashes. Everywhere within a Lear script document and your corresponding paragraph it will be rendered within a site tag. But, at this time it will only affect the representation of block quotes. We are not sure yet, how this can also be applied to images, tables, lists, etc. Tables, as we hope, are easy to interpret and to create. Simply use horizontal rules to separate cells. The header is always defined by the first line, while the second line is used to separate the table header from the body visually and to define their column alignment. As you can see in the result, you can sort tables by clicking onto the icon that appears on the right of every header cell. A table will then be either sorted ascending, descending, or not sorted, which means your initial row order will be restored. The position of the colon defines whether a column should be centered, aligned to the left or to the right. By default, if you do not use colons, all columns are aligned to the left. But why stopping here? A table, in many cases, is just a representation of a data set. If so, why not simply visualizing it accordingly and plot a graph, display a chart or a map, or whatever fits the most for your data? At the moment we apply simple rules to identify the nature of your dataset and thus choose a visual representation.
The easiest and probably most obvious representation of a simple plot would be the following. A header with some names and columns that contain numbers. The first column is interpreted as the main column and thus defines the x values, the rest is up to you. A cell is then only associated with a number. If the first word sequence of characters separated by a space can be parsed as a number, the zero kilometers within this example gets ignored. So if you want certain values to be ignored, simply attach something directly to the number or add a character in front of it. Lear script identifies this pattern and automatically adds a button above the table, which allows to switch between the table and the line chart representation. You can modify the chart interactively and even download the resulting image. A function cannot possess different y values for one x value, thus, if you have two or more equal x values, the resulting plot will be a scatter plot. Last but not least bar charts. If the first column contains at least one cell that cannot be parsed as a number while the others do have, then this table gets interpreted as a bar chart. The first column thus defines your set of groups. It is now also possible to sort your table according to different columns and to see this ordering also within the bar chart representation. As mentioned earlier, this is only a brief introduction into this topic. So check out section Fun with Tables for a complete overview. Editing tables might seem tedious, but actually it is not. There is a huge number of plugins for different editors that you can use, which do the formatting for you. You can use them to quickly navigate through your cells, and some even allow sorting. You can also use plain HTML in your markdown, if you missed something. It will mostly work pretty good. But it should be used with caution, since some interpreters apply different rules. Some interpret everything within an HTML tag as HTML, while others allow mixing. Thus, HTML can contain markdown, which contains HTML, which contains... By the way, Lear script allows mixing. Thus keep in mind that new lines and indentation are still relevant. The result shows how the inline CSS is applied to all nested markdown elements. However, if you want to apply some styling to your document, Lear script supports another minimal invasive way of doing that. We will describe this in detail in section styling. If you use custom HTML instead of Markdown, then no styling will be applied. You can of course create more complex content or tables. This way you can apply your own styling to all elements. If you want to, you can also copy the generated LIA script structure and use our classes. Most browsers include an inspector, which can be used to interactively inspect the entire DOM tree. Dot. But, you can also import your own styles within the main document comment by using the link definition. We will explain this in more details within the macro section link. The details and summary tags are standard HTML tags and GitHub also supports their usage with Markdown. These tags offer a neat way to define something what is nowadays called accordion. Thus, your user can click on the summary text to make the body of the details tag appear. If you want to embed more complex HTML and only HTML without taking care about indentation and formatting, then should use the LIA keep tag to surround your code. As it is demonstrated in the result. Everything within this tag will be treated as HTML only. 
No markdown parsing will be applied and indentation will be checked. This way, you could, for example, also import even more complex HTML tables, pictures with multiple sources for the different screen sizes, and more. With great power comes great responsibility. Thus, you will also be responsible for your styling. In Markdown, you can use a sequence of at least three subsequent backticks. Single quote. To indicate a code block that should not be treated as Markdown. But instead contains some kind of code for which syntax highlighting should be used, if possible. The first word after the backticks is used as an indicator. For which kind of syntax highlighting should be applied. In case you are wondering, how to embed a code block into a code block with backticks. Three backticks are the minimum. Thus you can surround your markdown code block example with a sequence of four or more backticks. If you start with four backticks, Lear script will pass everything as code until it reaches a matching number of backticks. However, we are still in the markdown world with static code visualization. Lear script has also support for interactive programming. Thus all of your code snippet can be made executable and editable. This will be described in more detail in section Interactive Coding. Markdown also supports adding code by using tilde, tilde, characters instead of backticks. This is at the moment not supported by Lear script, but might be added in the future. Additionally, it is also possible in standard Markdown to use indentation with at least four spaces to mark a block or a line as code. In Lear script, this is treated differently. You can use indentation to keep your document readable. The two indicators for text to speech in the example are treated equally by Lear script. But another Markdown interpreter will interpret the second example as a single paragraph. While the indicator in the first example will be treated as code and thus be easier to read with any other Markdown interpreter, including the representation on GitHub. If you want to bundle a couple of code blocks into something that mirrors a project, you can achieve this with the following syntax. All code blocks are simply attached to each other in order to indicate a grouping. If you separate them at least by one new line, they will be treated separately. This will be pretty neat if we introduce the concept of interactive code blocks. You can define optional names within the head of your code block. The starting plus, plus, and minus dash symbols are used to indicate if the resulting code blocks should be visible or hidden. However, you can change this by clicking onto the resulting title bar to either maximize or minimize the code block. If you do not add a plus or a minus as a prefix to your file, the plus is used as default. In most cases you can simply add the name of the language or the common file name ending into the head of a code snippet. Most markdown interpreters will use highlight JS for language rendering. Since we require also an editor with syntax highlighting capabilities, we use ACE. Thus, the language support might differ to other systems. We therefore apply mapping, so that you can still use all highlight JS shortcodes but also those of ACE. At the moment it is possible to insert horizontal rules by adding lines with at least three dashes. Longer sequences of dashes are allowed too. Common Markdown also allows to define such rules with asterisks. Asterisk, but this is used in Lear script to group blocks, as we will describe later.